All right, approximately one week ago, I made a video with this exact same pump, uh, touching on checking the accumulator charge pressure. So our issue was, and I'll go through this again, we're gonna hit the e-stop button, we'll hit the e-stop, and once the needle starts to fall, we'll track what number it is at when it starts to fall rapidly, and that's our accumulator pressure. So e-stop in, slow, 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 fast. So right there, that's the 50 mark. It fell at about 50. That means there's 50 bar pressure in the accumulator bottle, which is located right here. Now that charge pressure should be between 90 and 110 bar. So we're gonna have to top up that bottle, which we will do. Before we do so, I'm gonna fire the pump unit up and just show you here what uh, the result of low accumulator pressure is on the pumping function. Flash this thing up and we will throw it in forward pump. And we'll just take a look at how our S tube shifts. Okay, so not horribly slow, but a touch sluggish. So we will top this thing up and then we'll check back in on that again. Uh, the low charge pressure, um, what it causes is just slow shifting of the S-tube. Uh, what that can give you problems with is if you have a stiff or rough mix, the S-tube will not have quite enough jam to push through that rocky mix. Uh, also, when you're pumping at a rapid rate of speed, it can cause a bit of a lazy shift, which is noticeable at the end of the boom. You get kind of a slow rhythmic sort of a boom balance. So we're going to charge this thing up. And uh, it's not uncommon for these to bleed down a little bit. Uh, occasionally, you'll have the bladder rupture completely. Um, we kind of see that when you're transitioning into the cold weather in the wintertime. Um, I have seen pumps where they actually keep a second accumulator bottle and if one accumulator bottle fails they just switch the uh, they have a ball valve and they switch over to the second one as a backup because if that bottle does fail completely uh you're pretty much done your, your pumping is done for the day so anyhow we had a special uh special guest here who's going to fix this for me you want to say anything no not really <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to follow him. he's going to show us how to do this but we won't, we won't show you too much or he might put himself out of a job. We don't want everybody to know too much here, you know? So do you take it out or you just top it up right in place? I can top it up right here. Sweet. As long as it's not blowing out. Ah, uh, yeah, it's down at like 50. Yeah, it's probably fine. Just top it will up. That, um, will that drop just because of the cold weather? Is that normal? Schrader valve on top will leak out. Okay, okay. Usually when they blow, it's when we get into the winter time, right? We get freezing? Yeah. And they don't like that? Because if you hear when I loosen this, you'll hear it come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a little, a little pop there. A little pop. You ever seen the guys that have two accumulators? They have a second one as a backup and just a ball valve? Oh, yeah. But doesn't the Alliance, the Alliance has a, uh, a backup, right? for if your accumulator pops? It runs off the overrigger circuit. Ah, get the job so, done. It's just for cleaning out. Okay, okay. Well, you're you not supposed have, to pump you can't like run that? the boom at the same time. Oh, you can't? Okay. So, because it has to be an overrigger mode. Ah, I see, which would heat the oil up pretty quickly too, I would think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you got the... Here, you got to hit the e-stop. Oh, you got to hit the e-stop? Okay. You grab the remote. I thought it was the e-stop. Nope. Okay. E stop in. Oh, so that's showing what our actual pressure is right now? Yeah, yeah. So it's like 60, 65? Yeah. 
So not horribly low, but low enough to uh, make it slow. Yeah, to make it slow. Cool. David's got his fancy dancy kit there he's gonna plug in. And uh, yeah, we'll check back in. All right, David, just wheeling over his uh, giant bottle of nitrogen. That's what that is, just straight nitrogen? Yeah. What does it cost to fill that bottle? I don't know, they last forever though. They do, eh? Oh yeah. Just for doing top ups like this? Yeah. It's been at least two years. Really? Same bottle. So what is the actual kit? The kit is just the, uh, the apparatus that's on the bottle right now. And the hose. And that's it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I believe this one's right from High Deck. And aren't they like 1500 bucks for the kit? I remember it being like quite expensive. Yeah, I know Alliance sells them. I don't know what the price is though. But very, very straightforward. Yeah, there's not much to it. Any danger or risk? No. No. It's not explosive, right? It's just nitrogen. This is the same thing they use on AC units. Checking for leaks. Oh, really? Because it's cheap. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> makes sense. So they take out the Freon and just throw this in there and look for leaks. So I guess if you don't have the kit, the other option is you should probably keep an extra bottle charged up. Yeah, that's what a lot of guys do. Yeah. Isn't it it's, like 800 or something for a charge? Right? I think it is, yeah. And it's, what is it? Oh, it's easy to pull, to, to swap out. Yeah. It's like about four bolts and, uh, and a fitting on top there, so. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. All right, we got our nitrogen bottle secured with a, uh, a rated bungee cord. You just want me to let you know when it's at uh, about what do we want, 100 or? Yeah. Okay. Aim for 100, then we take the gauge off. It should okay. drop to about 90. Okay, I think we're there. A uh, little, little crack more. Little hair more. Just a, just a hair. Okay, kill it. Beauty. Like yeah. So all you're doing there is cracking the valve on the tank. Very little. Just very, very little. Just a hair. Okay. Because once we take off everything, it's going to leak a little bit. It out. is, okay, and then we end up back down at 90s where it, we want to be. It'll probably be, right? be at 95 when we're done. Okay. But. I was just want to make sure at least 90 to 100. 90 to 100. So you see if now if I go back on. Yeah. Look at that, just under 100. Just under. Mm -hmm. Some of the older ones were 110, right? I think the ones with the smaller bottles. Uh, I've never dealt with that. You see some guys who on the bigger bottles will run 110. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I, more chances of it blowing, I would say. Because I think it, yeah, it used to be 110 and then puts it made a revision years ago down to 90. Yeah. And that's probably just for longevity? I think so. I don't think it really knows much of a difference. Yeah. I've never seen a difference. I've seen guys running that 120 and all they do is blow up faster. Yeah. <laughs> that's about yeah. it. <laughs> I wonder if it helps them if they get a shitty mix though, if it gives it a little more jam to shift through it. I don't know. I wouldn't say so. That's all there is to it. That's it. And then so it connects to uh, to this this big line at the bottom of the bottle, right? Yeah. 
So if you want to swap the bottle out, you just undo the four bolts there. And the one line. And the nut on the bottom, the line on the bottom, and, and away she goes. Yeah, on this style, it's uh, absolutely horrible. Because oh. you have a steel line, and you're underneath trying to tighten it and hold the bottle correctly. And oh, and it's a fine thread, and it's a pain in the butt? Yeah, it is definitely a pain in the butt. It is. So the ones that are mounted up on the pump kit a lot easier. way easier like the 47's behind the outrigger yeah yeah way easier to get at to get to but it's easy because it's a long, uh, hose on the bottom yeah that would be a hell of an idea to have a second bottle and then you would theoretically yeah it's easily done yeah you theoretically never never get stuck a big freeway valve and this is the line we put in to bypass the hard shift soft shift because those are prone to breaking and leaking, which is what yeah. happened to ours. So ours that, is permanently on hard shift. That flared pipe was always breaking. Yes, yes. So we just oh. threw this in. So she's she's perma hard shift, which is just fine. Yeah, you don't notice. Yeah. They never get touched anyways. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's all there is to it. Shift it over now. Okay, we'll do a little little test of Rooney. Here we go. Excited to see. The fruits of our labor. Flash her up. Pump on, here we go. Let's see what we got. say she is noticeably snappier so not a not a night and day difference but definitely definitely noticeable so anyhow that's how you do it get yourself a big old bottle of nitrogen and this fancy dancy kit might even be uh oh part number on it nothing nothing it's a high dock gauge so i think it's direct from high dock Okay, this is the same one Alliance sells though? I don't know. Similar anyhow, I'm I sure. It's all the same. Yeah. Wherever you buy it, it's going to be the same setup. And it's that easy. Excellent. So here we go. Here's the uh, first of the while you're in there's. If you look at this new ish wear plate. See how it's chunked out right there? Oh yeah. Right? Isn't that odd? This pump seems to be hard on them. And this plate's got like what, like 200 hours on it? Not even. No, I don't even think that. You think that could have been like a piece of debris or something that shifted over and knocked it out or what? This pump always, man. Does last, it really? Last time it broke out the center. It did? Yeah. The rest of the plate was fine, center was gone. And that's just a, uh, a standard wear plate? It's not a, not a carbide or anything? No. The last one was carbide. And it did this. It only lasted like six months. I wonder if it doesn't like the carbide ring on the standard plate. But the other pumps, we run the same setup and it's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. This one does have that round plate. I don't know if it's different material. I wouldn't think huh. so, but. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty bad from this angle. Yeah. That's not good. That'll be next on the list. On a never ending list. Um, shit to fix. Oh, I did find a part number here. Oh, you did? Yeah, you oh, here we go. Take here a we look go. right in there. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> look what you did there. Oh, oh. David's no stranger to the camera. He was featured in many Alliance Tech Tip Tuesday videos. Hey, you want to do a reenactment of the oh, hey there? Oh, you, this might this might trigger some memories. Okay, okay. Oh, hey there. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> yeah. guys who've seen the video, they'll get it. Everybody else will just be scratching their heads. Anyhow, yeah, mountainside repair right there. If you're in the lower mainland, if you pay your bills on time yeah. and you don't bring him pumps full of hard concrete, he's definitely your guy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing before I go. This is probably the most important thing of the day. Here's the most important part of the video right here. Oh no, what's in there? Well, you, you, gotta, you gotta film me opening it because I, I need both hands here. This is very important. Very important, man. What is, what is in there, he says. I'm going to show you what's in there. They're nicely wrapped. That's a lot of tape. They don't smell like mothballs, so that's a good sign. <laughs> I, 
be a quality North American made product. Probably not, but. I'm gonna say China for sure. Yeah, pretty much everything is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a plus for the wrapping job. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. You want a we knife? Might need, we might need to edit this. Serious? Let's get in there. Oh. oh. That's even get, a nice, guesses? That's a nice box too. Made in China, right on the side. Perfect. That is too. Yeah, right there. <laughs> the best now is when it says made for the USA. That's the new thing. Let's say made for the USA. Yeah. Not in, just or for. Assembled in the USA. This is like ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. I'm getting frustrated. Just hang in there, folks. It's worth it. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, a bicep. Like my knife? <laughs> yeah, the little Phillips. Those stubby <laughs> Phillips. At least use the flathead. Oh, heated gloves. Boom, what's up? Oh, yeah. So this is actually going to be a... Uh, Obviously, a separate video on its own for something of this magnitude. <laughs> Check it out, though. Heated gloves. When the batteries go, oh yeah, batteries right in. Were they just? Oh, the rechargeables. Rechargeables, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. So the batteries go right in there. Oh, jeez. But so these are like a 2200 mAh battery. I got a backup. 3000 set <laughs> so these are supposed to be good on low power for like six hours mediums four hours high is like two and a half with the batteries that come with it so if i have the second set and i got the chargers here and i got them charging in the truck oh yeah i should be able to stay warm all day now the question is going to be do they fit let's go they fit my girly little hands they're oh oh my god they're actually nice look and they got this this fancy clip <laughs> <laughs> but the big question is going to be, I don't think they're very durable, I can tell you that already. Yeah. But, the big question will be, how are they, oh these are going to be nice. Ooh, look at the joysticks go. Yeah, so no more frozen hands in the middle of winter time playing black and white with the remote control. Just complete control and dexterity. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, these will uh, those will keep a guy from uh, the, the place in boom operator up on top of the high rise from noosing himself before we make it into the spring season. So, anyhow, <laughs> intelligent heating. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I can imagine the comments now. Yeah. <laughs> what an oxymoron that What's is. It's on the bottom there. Uh, oh, well, keep warm. Remember, folks, hey, remember, <laughs> keep warm. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Over and out. <laughs>